My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, or I should say this afternoon. Yes. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. All right. So I am uh, Dr. Dr. Clarence Lee Jr., and I am in San Diego, California. Awesome. So you're down the block from us. That's cool. So let's dive into it. How do you go from MBA to, I mean, how do you go from a doctor to an entrepreneur uh, and, and, and being in self-development? Because that is not a realm where we see a lot of doctors making that transition. Or if yeah. they do, they're going to stick in their own field and they're going to talk about the things that they're doing research on, but not self-development. So that's my first question. Give us a little bit of a story of that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been practicing medicine for about 10 years and I've always been like a self-help kind of junkie. I've always been trying to figure out how to improve myself. It started out with uh, playing basketball. How can I be, become a better basketball player? And then, then from there, it was like, it's just how can I be a better person? How can I master life? Well, as I started to practice medicine, one of the things that I found was that there were some limitations to what I could do in the exam room. So I always tell people, you know, you know, folks, people don't need a pill, they need a purpose. And so what I found is I, you know, you interact with patients, I could prescribe them a medication that would be, you know, perfect for whatever ailment I was treating, but I couldn't always make them take the medicine. And so as I started to ask more and more questions, you get into deeper, deeper about what's actually driving that person, what kind of mindset do they have, what fears do they have, and you see the life of this person. And so I said, well, you know, I really wanted to take my, you know, what I do with helping and encouraging people, I wanted to do that specifically, you know, not just wait for the opportunity for them to come in the exam room, encourage them. Um, but no, let me go out and intentionally say, okay, my intent to interacting with you is to change your life. And so, you know, un unfortunately, you know, you, you, people don't always go to the doctor for that, but you know, that's what I was passionate about. That's what drove me to, to go into medicine. And so, you know, the personal development was just kind of blossom out of that. That is awesome. And, and I want to talk about that because I was on your live session. I think it was this morning and you showed that book where it's got all, everybody's covers on the white coat so talk about that a little bit because i want to see that cover one more time i yeah. did i wasn't able to stay for the whole entire live session i got in between and then i saw that yeah so you know um about seven years ago i started sharing my my story you know um how did i how did i get into medical school all the you know the struggles i had to go through you know i ended up having to apply for, to medical school 500 times so uh, it took me five years to get into medical school. And like through that process, I learned, um, and which is why I teach persistence and resilience now is what I teach and I stomp on when I go and speak. It's all about not quitting and keep going. Um, but, you know, I started sharing my story. And as you share your story, more people reach out to you with diff for different platforms for you, for you to continue to share. And so Dr. Dale, he, uh, he has a podcast called Black Men in White Coats. And, you know, he's on this mission to increase the, the number of, of minority men in medicine. And so he saw my story and, you know, had me on his podcast and I was, he, he, he highlighted me in his book. So I thought it was cool. I actually have it. I didn't know you were going to ask me about it, but I actually have it because I was talking about it this morning. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's like me. I'm, I'm that little guy right there on the front right there. <laughs> That is awesome. That is but awesome. You, but you know what I was talking about this morning, and I think just for everybody in general, like when you share your story, when you share those struggles that you've overcome and encouragement, it, it matters, you know? And so just to see somebody hear my story and want to put me in their book was just awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Plus you now your network is becoming other people. I'm pretty sure they've gone through life challenges and turbulences and all that. So it, tell us about, pers what is the word persistence and resilience? Like first, I think in order for us to utilize it in our lives, we need to understand what it means and how to apply it. So give us a little bit of an idea on that. Yeah. So, um, you know, as I started to try to help people uh, get what they want out of life or accomplish their, their dreams, one of the main things that I just kept running up against was people would tell me like, hey, I had this vision. I wanted to do X, Y, Z, but then ABC happened and, you know, I had to quit. And so I started to see this pattern just over and over of this consistent, just 
stopping pursuing this, the stopping in the process of pursuing your dream. And then, then it was a compromise is introduced in your life and you don't get your dream. Right. So I said, well, for me, the only difference, cause people would always ask, well, how are you able to do this? And I've been able to do some cool stuff, man. And just, just through God, I've just been blessed. And people would ask, and I would say, there's one thing, there's one thing. And the one thing is I persisted. And I, 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 I used different, you know, kind of ways to motivate myself to keep going. And so for me, you know, persistence is just putting your foot, drawing a line in the sand, saying this is going to happen no matter what. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many no's I get. I, that None of that matters. Um, I'm going to keep pushing until it happens. And so, you know, that, that's, that was my story and how being able to be, become a physician um, was, was simply not quitting. That was the one key. Um, only so if people, I'm, only if we teach that in high school, how would our country be different? And, you know, and I feel people, because you look, so, and, and another thing I ask people is, how many people do you know that actually live in their dreams? And most people are, I don't know anybody that's living their dream. I don't know. I don't know. And, and to me, that's my biggest pain that I see in the world. Like, that's what I want to address with my work is I want more people in the world living their dream. Like you interact with somebody that's on their, that's in their lane doing what they want to do. They have a whole different type of energy. I mean, their energy is, is, a, is on another level opposed to you have someone in a job that they don't care about. They're, they're not passionate about. They don't see how they're serving their purpose in it. Their energy is on another level. So, and I, I really think just not quitting, you know, and, and the young people, you know, for the young people that are on, it's sometimes we have a timeline and, and the timeline is not correct. <laughs> like, you know, like we have this so-and-so, this is the timeline that's supposed to happen in. And if it doesn't happen in this timeline, it's not going to happen for me. And so with the work that I do, I just want to adjust that timeline and say, hey, look, don't give up too early. Let's keep pressing. It's eventually going to happen. Yeah, my, my, since I've gotten older, I adjust the time frame. And I always give myself that little cushion or buffer. I say, we're going to go by this day, but, you know, this is contingency plan. If things don't go right, which things most of the time don't go right, and you need to do adjustments, and I give that maybe two weeks, maybe two months, maybe two years. So now when I do planning, I think I'm, I'm getting better at calculating the obstacles that are going to come that I have not encountered. I know there will be obstacles. So I kind of think if you prepare yourself mentally that there will be challenges, you're not getting surprised. You know, you're like, okay, I was anticipating something going wrong. Okay, so how do we address that? I think it takes away the, the, the frustration. It eliminates a lot of unnecessary things that will take away from your energy. I, I agree 100%. One of my mentors is an orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Key. He's in, uh, he's actually the, the orthopedic surgeon for the Royals in Kansas City, where I'm from. Uh, he's one of my mentors growing up. And one of the first things he told me um, when I started shadowing him, I started shadowing him maybe like 15 or 16. I said, hey, I want to be a doctor. Show me, show me the way. And one of the first things, one of the first conversations he had with me, he said, you are picking the harder path. So therefore, it is going to be difficult. You, you're you choosing to, in, in the academic world, the MD or the, the medical school is the highest, right? So you're, you're picking that path. So, hey, just know that it's going to be difficult. Not for discouragement, not to say you can't do it, but just understand this is what you're choosing. And so if you're going to choose the harder path, there's going to be some walls, there's going to be barriers. Uh, but I think having that, so to your point, that was the, the mindset I had in the beginning was that it was going to be difficult, expect obstacles. And so when, when they happened, you know, it wasn't a surprise. It was just more of like, okay, let me adjust. I got a rejection letter. Let me adjust. Let me fix that application. Let me apply again, you know. Definitely. I was watching, it was so funny, man. I was watching this, uh, this you know, young entrepreneur guru. He's a mindset coach. He teaches all the younger entrepreneurs, and he was there. He was talking about, yeah, it's so easy. It's this, how to make six-figure, all of these different things. Yeah. And I was like, so I did more research on him, and he's been at it for over 11 years. And he was on the stage telling people it's easy. Yeah, this. I was like, 
dude, you're setting everybody up for failure. It took you 11 years. Let's just say you're a good mentor, good teacher, good instructor. You're a good coach. You're going to walk. You're going to hold their hand, walk them through it. Okay, five years. But you saying that next year you could get to six figures, I was like, it doesn't make sense unless you do a magic or you're going to take money from your bank account and transfer it to them. I was like, tell them it's going to take two to five years. And the ones that don't want to come along are the ones that are not going to make it anyway. Let's deal with the people that are, you know, they got that tough skin and they're serious. They want to be in it for long term, not just short term. So, yeah. And I I think um, and I, I would just say that's only fair. Right. I mean, and that's how I explain it to people. If, if, if the guy that's going to be willing to put in 10 years or 11 years, and, and if he gets to be the one on stage that everybody's listening to, good on him. That's only fair. If you only want to put in a few years, you shouldn't be the guy. Right. You know, so I think it's only fair. Everybody has to start and learn and, and, and grow their skills and improve. That's the fairness of the game. So, you know, on one hand, you could say, well, that's discouraging. It's going to take me 10 to 12 years or whatever. But on the other hand, I think it's encouraging because that levels the playing field. So now if me and you are competing, it's like, well, who's going to go harder? Like, it's like, who's going to put in more hours? Who's going to keep going further, right? Like, who's going to quit last? Like, that's what the game becomes, you know? Um, and, and so that I really think just as far, you know, and, and living your dream and, and going after what you want, um, you know, that would be the one thing I would share with people is just, you know, figure out a way for you to keep going. Definitely. And, and that, that comes down to like knowing who you are, what you want, what are your priorities, what are things that you're willing to give up. And, and that's what I think. It's an exchange. You were willing to exchange that time and energy and effort for what you want to acquire that. I feel like a lot of people have this, I don't want to call it entitlement, but I have not found another word for it that is, that's similar to entitlement. But I know some people get weirded when I say entitlement. I'm like, if I want to have a six pack, I got to be able to give in 30 minutes to gym. If I'm not willing to give the 30 minutes or if I don't do the 30 minutes, I shouldn't expect that. So for me, I shouldn't get pissed. So what are you willing to exchange? Because that's all there is. You have to exchange your time, energy, effort for something that you want. You can't just go wish for it, sit on the couch and hope that it's going to ha- like, you know, that to me is like, at what point did people get that in their brain that that was going to be the, the, the way? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I think, you know, I, I, uh, I think that's one of the, I think that's why it's really important for folks to have mentors and to, and to actually study the paths of the people that they want to emulate because any story, you know, and, and I share in my book persist and, and in my books, I share my story, anybody's story, any movie, any success, any movie about a successful person, any story that's worth paying attention to, it's going to go like this. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. There's going to be low moments where you, the person thinks it's not going to happen. They're going to fail. And in the movie, you're just like, are they going to do it? You know, and and that's the way it is. We know it. I feel like inherently we know that this, because we've watched the movies, we've seen people's stories, but when it comes to us, we all of a sudden equate, maybe it's going to be easier for me, or or maybe I'm not going to be the one, or I'm going to be the one that hit it the first time. You know, that's what we tell ourselves. Uh, But in the day, it levels the playing field. Persistence levels the playing field. Who's able to keep going further? Who's able to keep going more? Um, and, and that makes it even. So you and the other guy are even. He's put in more hours or you put in more hours, you know? So that's, that's, a, that's, how I, that's how I see it. And, you know, that's the beauty about being in America. That's the beauty about the opportunity that we have. Every person has the same 24 hours. They can wake up and, and say, I'm going to commit and put action into this thing. Or, hey, I'm just going to wait and see what happens to me. And the people no, that grab, somebody right? exactly somebody mentioned pursuit of happiness, and I actually met Chris um, at one of the conventions, and he spoke for us, and he said when I did the movie Pursuit of Happiness, the difficulty was conveying the message, at how hard it was, and how we can project that in a movie theater on a screen so people could feel that, and then he said even though we strive to do as good as a job as we could. He goes, 
it was still 10 times harder than what they showed on the on, on the screen because it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Like, and, and it was just one goal that he had was to be a good father for his son and make it to the end. So it, it's to me, it's like, but isn't that the fun part? Don't we get an enjoyment where we overcome those and we give respect and we get inspired by the people that, you know, they, they go out of their way. Like, you're like, there's no way that this, but that's the beauty of it. Because you and I thought it was like impossible and the guy does it, you're like, this is cool. And then when they make it, that means it's possible. They just opened up the door for you and I to get inspired and take it to the next level. Not even just to match that taking it to the next level. Like they did that 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Now I got to add on to, to that. So as a human race, I think that's the whole entire, like a doctor comes, builds up on someone else's research and they just, mm -hmm. they just keep going. It's not like to get to a, a good level of doctor and then they're at the same level. That's not right. the definition of a coach. The definition of a coach is taking you to a higher level that they're at. Absolutely. I think one, one of the, when the work that I do, um, cause I'm, re I'm really passionate about going to speak to kids and, and most of my speaking business is in the higher education industry. And, and one of the things, this is how I know when I have, I've done my job is, is when that student comes up to me afterwards and they say, you're just like me. If I can get somebody to equate the success with who they are, and it's not a gap, right? Like there's no distinction between I'm not special. I'm not perfect. No, it's like, wow, that guy's just like me. He came from a place just like me. He, I, I was just like that. What? Wow. I can be just like, you know what I mean? Like that, that's when I know that I, you know, I've, I've done, I've done my job and I think it's the same for all of us, you know, to, to continue to hold that mindset of, Hey, okay, this is my goal. This is my dream. Uh, and, and it's going to be possible for me, you know, just continue to hold that. How how could people find you? Um, so at Clarence Lee Jr. Uh, Clarence Lee Jr. dot com is my website. I'm uh, Dr. Clarence Lee Jr. on all of the social media sites. Um, you know, my, my latest book, the title was Persist, uh, Persist, How to Beat the Things That Make Us Quit. Um, and um, and yeah, those are those are the main places. Um, you know, I, I, I talk a little bit about my um, I've got a Persist Institute where I train in personal development, just helping people get to the next level, but it's really about mindset. And um, and so, yeah, that's that's what I'm all about. That's where you can find me. Awesome. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. Hopefully, we'll get to do more videos. Listen, the topics we talked about, I don't think 20, 30-minute videos will do even this. Just, like, these are massive topics. Like, you got to dive into it. Like, each one is like a... 10 to 20 hour course by itself but definitely looking forward to do more videos with you hopefully in the near future and let us know if there's any way we could be any part of any help that you need for for getting the word out there absolutely i was going to say let me let us know if there's anything that me and my team could do to get the word out there let us know absolutely we'll do i appreciate you reaching out great to connect you got it brother talk to you soon take care later bye-bye